Hello and welcome to Emerging IT Product Development and the use of data uh, from police to gain small insights uh, as narrated by me, Miroslav Spidenkov. This project is also by the Mummy. This project uh, and this presentation uh, will consist of four parts uh, that I will cover. And the first part is the requirements, specification and the justification of the project. The overall aim of the project uh, was to see how the reduction of the United, Gover United Kingdom government spending on the police affects the crime in the United Kingdom. As such, the requirements were as follows. To gather the police data, to define the small insights that will be used on judging the data, and to use Watson to develop small insights from the data acquired. The small insights these are the smart insights uh, developed in part one of the assignment uh, which I will be using when judging my data sources and the questions that I will be asking in relation to the police. Let's move on to the next point which is the justification. Uh, the justification for the uh, project is quite simple. Uh, as mentioned before, the police resources are being thinned out every year according to Dottie in 2015 and the openness of the data from the police allows for the easy access and analysis of the data uh, mentioned before. Um, by embodying the benefit for humanity, uh, we will be attempting to gain small insights into the crime and how reducing funding uh, affected, uh, and if it affected, and in what ways did it affect the police uh, and the crime in the United Kingdom. So now let's move on to the design and the uh, development part of the project. Uh, it was quite simple. Uh, I needed to acquire the data from the police.co.uk. Uh, this data then uh, was gathered uh, and then created, compiled into master files for individual analysis. Once the master files uh, have been created, they were then uploaded to Watson Analytics uh, from IBM for uh, data analysis of purity. Uh, this feature allows to look into the most obvious issues that were present, such as missing values, uh, duplicate values, and uh, out of the ordinary values in the data sets. What this uh, allows to do is to get rid of those values or values that are useless or values that have simply too many errors and then uh, you can use Watson to explore options to gain some initial insights and to come up with some interesting questions you would like to ask. Once you come up with an interesting question, you want to go and refine that data set. Perhaps you want to focus on a particular little bit from the question that you have followed or perhaps you want to refine and add other months or perhaps you want to uh, just expand on the question. Uh, for the design and development of these uh, questions and these analysis, I repeated the process over and over again where I would explore the options given to me and then I would refine those questions and to see where it would lead me. Now let's go on to the uh, final and the bulkiest bit of the presentation which is the insights gained. It from the project, uh, it will contain the s five subsections, uh, which are attitude towards the data, technical integration issues, data sourcing, cleansing, and integration issues, analytical insights, and finally, data for humanity principles embodied. And finally, uh, uh, the conclusions will follow after that. So let's move into to attitude towards data. Uh, what the problem that I have arrived in this uh, project was that I have let myself make preconceived notions about what I want from the data before I even started working on the data. What that led to me is not asking specific questions but asking specific questions and expecting specific answers. And this is a bad attitude to have as then I couldn't find the answers that I was looking for. I got frustrated and thought there was something wrong uh, the data and whatnot, and unfortunately there was nothing wrong with the data, it's just my approach was very bad. And what I learned was you need to let the data lead you and not the other way around. It's good to have questions beforehand that you want to ask the data, 
but not what not have the expectations of what you want from the data as that will simply set you on a bad path. And another issue that I have found when working with Watson in relation to the uh, towards the data was that Watson is a great tool. However, uh, it, you, one shouldn't rely too much on it as the tool for exploring allows you to compile questions and you, try, you start to rely on these questions way too much and you start to focus and, and narrow your field of vision and narrow and narrow it down where you keep asking the same questions and stop thinking outside the box. Uh, so it's a good tool, a starting point, however relying on it too much can stop you from asking very interesting and very compelling questions otherwise and that's what I've learned. Now let's move on to technical integration issues. Uh, the final master file uh, simply had too many rows due to the CSV limit. Unfortunately this did not mean this mean meant that uh, I was not able to compile the master file, upload it in all the security and then look at yeah, the England as a whole and see how crime has changed over a period of time so I had to specifically target specific areas instead. Uh, there were also some issues with the data regards to the change in um, 2013 crime groupings. What was happened was that uh, the police had several criteria for crime times between the years of 2011 and 2013 and then got rid of some and then introduced new ones between 2013 and present. What this meant that unfortunately this may have influenced some bits of the data without actually affecting. Even if one were to analyze the data from 2013 and onwards, there might have been a sudden spike in that data indicating that some crimes were more prevalent, not because they actually increased, but because they are now grouped under different, uh, under, under some of the old crimes that were simply separated into more or smaller additions. So that has to be kept in mind and uh, that was an issue that had to be overcome when manipulating and asking the questions in the data. There were some problems with the empty fields as a lot of the data uh, had empty fields such as crime ID and the last outcome category. Also all crime outcomes were not updated. This posed a particular question as this eliminated the chance of asking a question uh, such as out of all of the crimes how many have been sold and how many have been not sold in the case of not finding the perpetrator or not being able to prosecute the perpetrator. With a lot of the fields missing the values, this unfortunately meant that that question can simply not be asked as it would not represent the whole of, uh, the, whole of the crime area and it would simply not be factual. There are also some errors in latitude and longitude, which I would not have otherwise noticed unless Watson actually pointed to out to me. There were quite a few outliers that were simply outside of the area of jurisdiction without pointing in the data that they were outside of the area of jurisdiction, which is quite a bizarre issue that I'm not sure if it's intended or if it is simply an error in typing. Now let's move on to the next section, which is data sourcing and cleansing part. Uh, well, police data seemingly was an easy choice uh, for consideration for data. It's a government body that uh, one would expect to have a very high standard for keeping all of the data close, not having missing values. However, the reality was quite different. As you can see below in the picture, there are quite a lot of missing values as pointed out by Watson, especially in context and crime ID, as well as last outcome categories. This is just an example of one of the cities, but many other cities had higher and sometimes lower, but on average the missing values were about 35%, which unfortunately, uh, as mentioned before, posed some issue when asking some questions, when wanting to ask some questions that could give some very interesting insights. Um, however, Watson provided some very, while well, having some flaws, it has provided a very amazing feature, which is the refine feature. And before, if you wanted to analyze pieces of data, you would have to um, create separate files uh, and stuff like that and backups. Whereas here you can choose to ignore a particular row of data without actually deleting it, which allows for some very interesting data analysis 
uh, without cluttering the place up and creating backups. So this is a very great thing, as well as calculations done in real time, where you can uh, create some calculations by merging, merging the rows uh, or creating new values and then seeing how they interact over the period of rows or time or asking the questions uh, in different manner. This allows for some very interesting adjustments to be done on the fly. Let's move into the final section, uh, that is uh, analytical insights. Uh, and the analytical insights that I have gained from the project was that overall the crime is on the decline, however, there is an increase in violence and sexual offences. This is quite bizarre and will be discussed later on in the video as to why this might be the case. Uh, however, on the final notes, that Whiteson provides some interesting insights. It gives easy and very fast usual demographics, as pointed out below, without having any uh, inputs, which pose, uh, shows some interesting statistics. However, Watson is a new piece of software that hasn't been out for more than two years, and as such, it's bound to have glitches and bugs. And so, over relying on this, at the moment might be a problem uh, as it did not allow me to do some more interesting computational questions. And as such, using Watson in conjunction with other uh, software analysis systems might be a good idea. So, is the crime on the decline? Well, in particular antisocial behaviour what seems to be on the decline, however most other crimes has evened out between the years of 2013 and 2015 and is at around the same steady pace for pretty much every town with the exception of violent, violence and sexual uh, crimes. So what seems to be the case that the police is focusing on the more dangerous crimes and keeping, in t keeping, keeping them in bay and this means that they are less focused on curbing antisocial behaviour, or perhaps simply people are less antisocial. Whatever that may be, it's an interesting uh, insight into how the statistic has changed over the years. Now let's take a, look, a closer look about what might have happened with the violence and sexual uh, crimes. Before uh, at 2011, between 2013, there were other um, statistics which is violent crime and other kinds of, of those like public disorder. Those were then taken out at the end of 2013 and different ones added. What might have happened, with the, to explain the sudden spike, was that all statistics were separated into different categories and added on top of the other ones, which might have increased the spike. However, if that were not the case, it is glaringly obvious that there is an increase in violence and sexual crimes in the United Kingdom. It has steadied out at the, year of t at the end of 2015, however, a close look must be kept at all times and in the future. Now let's move on to the final bit, which is the Data for Humanity Principles. The analysis that we have performed uh, can be used to better target police focus, especially with violence and uh, sexual assaults, if that is indeed has been on the rise, then police might need to be focused for the betterment of humanity. Uh, and further analysis can be done to give more insights that would benefit the community and humanity as a whole by creating di different mashups of, of different statistics. It could give you more insights uh, from uh, analyzing particular data sets and asking particular questions. Now let's move into our final conclusions. To conclude, there needs to be a higher focus uh, on the crime in the United Kingdom, especially with the apparent trend that the sexual uh, assaults and violence is on the rise and see how that develops as well as what is the impact or budget cuts on antisocial behaviour and other crimes are in tow, are they increasing, decreasing and how will that develop throughout 2016. There is hope for improvements in statistics in a more consistent manner, if, by if police were to make sure that uh, the empty data fields would be empty, it would open the gates to ask very interesting questions about the effectiveness of the police, so that would 
give us some very interesting insights, as well as mashups for the statistics such as the ONS, locations of the lightnings, uh, where the luminosity is high, how does that affect crime, location of the CCTV cameras, and so on. Thank you very much, and the final slide of this presentation is the reference users. Thank you very much.